My name is John Van Barrett. I'm the founder and president of Vibration Research. We've been around for 20 years now, innovating, designing, and coming up with easy to use and very accurate control systems. We have the world's best controller, and now we have a new innovation we'd like to tell you about called IDOF, Instant Degrees of Freedom. IDOF was uh, developed primarily for the aerospace industry because they have a particular task in mind. That is, run a satellite, a high value item, at extremely high levels of random vibration for a very short period of time. This will show instantly any imperfections in the test fixture, any imperfections that were currently masked with all tests, to the best of my knowledge, that are run in the industry, and show them instantly what's really going on. Now, in the aerospace industry, that's very important because oftentimes uh, you'll be testing an expensive payload. And the payload, you may not want to subject to high levels of vibration any longer than you absolutely have to. Now, this payload, of course, has to go through a rocket launch scenario that is very high vibration. So the desire is to find out, while it's on the ground yet, what's going to happen, are there any problems, is something going on that we should know about before we tuck it into the rocket payload section and blast off. IDOF is a, a great solution to this problem uh, because as those levels are increased during that test, uh, what most people are looking for is intolerance conditions. And because of the short duration, uh, typically there's not enough time during the test to reach those intolerance conditions uh, if you use the real uh, PSD averaging at that level. Uh, so what IDOF does is compute the averaging and remove a lot of the error, uh, but still provide an accurate picture of what's actually happening on the product so you don't run into an over or an under test on the product. What happens uh, when you're running the test at a low level and then step it up to a high level? Why would you be concerned if uh, everything isn't quite exactly the same as it was at low level? Consider a couple scenarios. If due to fixture resonances, or even product resonances, something happens to the amplitude or the frequency that it causes a shift when you go from low level to high level, you could either over test or under test your product. Let's consider over test. If you step it up to a high level and don't even realize that uh, the amplitude is 10 dB, 20 dB higher than what the display showed, you could be putting a lot more amplitude energy at certain frequencies into your product. Consider the alternative, uh, under testing. If you step your, your test up to a high level, you may suddenly find out that at a certain band of frequencies, the energy you thought was there really wasn't there. And if you had a resonance in your system, resonance in your product, it may not have been excited. And that excitation may not happen until launch. And at launch, it finally gets tested for the first time. You thought it was tested on the ground, but it really wasn't. And at launch, you may hit that uh, resonance and cause damage to your product, which you should have observed on the ground, but then didn't find out about until launch. Vibration Research has a history of innovation, and IDOF is just the latest innovation that we offer. Uh, to answer the uh, or address the issue that people have of running uh, short duration random tests, where the levels would come up and they needed to achieve an intolerance condition. And the way that controllers did that was really inaccurate. It provided an inaccurate picture and was an over or under test in a lot of cases for the testing that they were doing. So let's take a closer look at how other controllers might hide what's really going on during a random vibration test. When testing high cost products, it's not uncommon for test engineers to start at a lower level test to see how the system and product responds. Normally this is done at about minus 20 dB. They let the system stabilize and if everything looks good, the test is then brought to full level. This is where things get interesting. When the system jumps from low to full level, the random averaging should be reset. Why? Because if there's any change in the vibration pattern, such as a shift in resonant frequency or a change in amplitude, whether it be low or high, all of these changes won't be accounted for. You would only be using the low level data. 
Instead of resetting random averaging, other controllers will simply multiply the low-level data to full level. It's like saying, just take the low-level data and multiply by 100. The control trace looks great, but what's really going on? That answer is simple. You're hiding the truth. This is a real problem. There are test specs out there that require a very tight plus minus 1.5 dB control tolerance in a short duration test. When resetting averaging, this is mathematically impossible. Vibration Research has solved this dilemma with its latest patent-pending innovation called IDOF, Instant Degrees of Freedom. At the heart of IDOF is its ability to remove estimation error, allowing the user to more clearly see the control error. The control error is what the test engineer is really concerned about, that is, the actual product or system vibration. With the IDOF method, it resets averaging during each change in level, it displays all the incoming test data at all times of the test, and it abides by the degrees of freedom prescribed by the user. We're going to demonstrate the value of IDOF by first running a vibration test using a sample brand controller and showcasing how many test engineers are currently analyzing the data that results in over or under testing. Then we'll run the same test using the VR9500 with the new IDOF feature enabled. In both cases, we'll run the signal from each of the two controllers into a separate signal analyzer to get an independent verification of what's really happening. We'll then show the test results from each controller as it compares to the independent analyzer as well as to each other. The product we're testing is a lawnmower propeller blade. We chose this because it will show a non-linear response as we move from low level to full level random vibration. Today, our test engineer is Jade, who will run us through this testing sequence. All right, let's get started. We'll start with the sample brand controller. Notice how the control trace jumps from minus 20 dB to full level, with no reset of averaging, and more importantly, the trace simply multiplied itself to full level. It appears that everything is okay. Now let's run the same signal into an independent signal analyzer. What does it show? There are several clear resonances not shown with the sample brand controller display. How can our test engineer make a decision to abort the test if he can't see what's really going on? Next, we'll move to the VR9500 vibration controller with the new patent pending instant degrees of freedom. The test setup is quite easy. Simply check that you want IDOF on, enter a value, and then start your test. Watch as the system moves from low level to full level. The averaging is reset and IDOF quickly displays a smooth line, but the resonances are still clearly shown. Let's run the same signal into the independent signal analyzer now. What does it show? We can see that the resonances match what was displayed with IDOF in the VR9500. Our test engineer can now make an informed decision, avoiding costly overtesting or potentially dangerous undertesting. Which controller would you trust to make critical product decisions? Which controller will provide the smoothest display control trace with no compromise in displaying actual product conditions? The VR9500 with instant degrees of freedom is now available to answer those questions.